Good morning and welcome to our daily devotional here in Greenwell Street. We're delighted you're joining with us. We pray the Lord will bless us in this time together. Well, let us bow in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Father, who is the giver of every good and perfect gift, we humbly come into your presence this morning. Thankful, O Lord, for all that you have blessed us with already and anticipating how you will bless us as we listen again to your word. We thank you, O Lord, that your word is as manna for our souls to feed and nourish us. And Lord, we pray that we will be strengthened as we listen to and learn from the truth of your word. How privileged we are to have the scriptures in our own language and to have such a ready access to them. We pray that that same Holy Spirit who gave these scriptures will now come and be our teacher of them and help us in our understanding. Father, it is you alone who is deserving of our praise and our thanks. So be pleased to bless us now as we wait upon you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're continuing to look at this theme of garden in the scripture and we're into Gethsemane. We started there last time with Jesus' communion, the garden of communion, the place where he often went to pray with his father. So we're going to read in Matthew 26 and from verse 36, the word of God. Then Jesus went with his disciples to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, If it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. This is a garden of submission. Jesus, knowing why he has come into this world, we are told that he had set his face to go to Jerusalem. And of course, in the course of that journey to Jerusalem, he had on numerous occasions told his own disciples why he was going there. His death was the reason he came. And so it is that we are on the very brink of that death. And Jesus has come yet again for communion with his Father to cast his burden upon the Lord, as Peter reminds us. And yet there is an amazing lesson for us to learn here. Because here we see Jesus' humanity led bare before us. Because as he reflects upon what awaits him, his entire humanity recoils at the thought of it. Here he makes reference to a cup. And of course throughout the scriptures this picture of a cup is usually qualified with the words of wrath. That is what Jesus is saying here. May this wrath, this cup of wrath that is soon to be poured out upon me as the sin bearer of my people, may it be taken from me. Now let us think what this was going to involve. It was going to involve the punishment of every single one of your sins and mine 
and every single one of that great multitude that no man can number and that was going to be punished by Almighty God as he pours out his wrath upon his only beloved. We cannot begin to fathom what that must be like. And of course, we shall never fully understand what it is for Christ having borne that for us. We shall not have to. Christ is calling out, if there's some other way whereby I can redeem my people, then, Father, I would choose that way. But, and here is the point, but if there is no other way to redeem my people, but that I do become their sin bearer and bear the wrath that they each deserve, then, Father, not what I might want, but your will be done. Here is submission. Here is faith in its highest expression. And you know, it is important for us to understand what true faith is. You see, there are those today who would say, if only you had enough faith, then such and such could happen. And they think that it is great faith to tell God what to do. In actual fact, it is the height of arrogance for us to tell God what to do. Since when did we know what God's will would be for us as individuals? Rather, the Lord Jesus Christ himself had already taught his disciples something that we repeat regularly in the course of our own lives. Where in prayer, he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The highest expression of faith is the willing submission to the Father's will. It is knowing we can trust him, even though the circumstances may cry out against us. And here we have the example of that in his own son. Calvary lay before him. The judgment of not only man, but of God, was about to be levelled against him. His entire humanity says some other way, if possible. But as the true son of man, he says, but not my will, but yours be done. If you are a Christian, then this is surely what is expected of each of us. No matter what circumstances you find yourself in, you may well have wanted some things to be different. You may well have wanted life to turn out in a different way. But your expression of faith is this morning to say, Lord, it is only by your sovereign will that I am where I am in the circumstances I face. And Father, not my will, but yours be done. It is in submitting to the Lordship of our God that we are then promised his presence his peace, his calm. Because isn't there one very striking thing that occurs immediately following this? He goes back and finds the disciples asleep and we'll pick that up on another occasion. But then he says, Are you still sleeping? Look, the hour is near. The Son of Man is betrayed. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Christ rises from this communion with his Father and he faces what lies ahead of him. He doesn't try to escape it. He doesn't try to avoid it. He faces what lies before him because he knows, as each of us know in our own heart, that there is no safer place than the centre of God's will. Let us pray. Father, we confess 
that we cannot enter into all that our Lord Jesus was going through on that evening in the Garden of Gethsemane. We know, Lord, that the scriptures tell us that he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. His entire humanity was recoiling at the thought of what lay before him. And yet he chose to walk that path and to do so alone. And Lord, he did it out of love for sinners like us. We confess there are times when we struggle with your will in our lives. Times when we ask the question, how could this have happened to me? Or why did this happen to me? But Father, there are times when we have to rest in the knowledge that what has happened, no matter what circumstance we're facing, is not something that has befallen us apart from your will, but that in an actual fact it is part of your will for us. And Father, we will only know the peace that you want us to know when we rest in your will rather than fight against it. Teach us then, O Lord, to submit willingly and gladly to your Lordship and to your will and in so doing to know that we are choosing as Christ chose, not my will, but yours be done. Father, through this day, watch over us. You know each of us in our own particular situations. You know the cares that weigh heavy upon our hearts and minds. But Father, today, we also want to count our many blessings and to name them one by one. For it will only then surprise us as to what the Lord has done. Bless us for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.